Helena. Good afternoon to you all. I very gladly welcome all of you to this webinar on networking through LinkedIn, organized by the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development Center, IEDC of Marbeselius Institute of Technology and Science, Podhamangalam. We can start this program with a silent prayer. All the participants are requested to sit in their respective seats and pray silently. Thank you all. On behalf of the institution and IEDC MBIT, I offer my sincere regards to all the participants who have joined today. Firstly, let me invite Rahul KS, Chief Financial Officer, IADC MBITS, for the welcome address. Hello, am I audible properly, sir? Anyone can respond, please? Yes, yes. Yes, Rahul. Yes. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to welcome or introduce everyone. So, uh, first of all, uh, I would welcome our principal, sir. Uh, Dr. P. Sojandal, who has been our one of the most uh, person who have supported and guided, given us start mentoring and given us start guidelines to create this program and to present it. And for every program we have conducted, our principal sir has been in the support and he has provided the start mentoring for us. So I would like to welcome our principal sir for this event on national webinar on uh, networking through LinkedIn. Welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, next, I would like to welcome uh, the chief guest or our speaker, uh, Mr. Udesh Uday Kumar, who has been uh, done his graduation from uh, uh, done his graduation in BTEC in computer science engineering and now currently working in Deloitte. It is a US brand company working in India. Uh, so I would like to welcome uh, Udesh Uday Kumar for, for this event. Uh, welcome you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, and uh, talking about this event, uh, uh, Udesh Uday Kumar is a computer science graduate uh, from a college in engineering, uh, engineering college in Kerala. And he has created a profile in such a way that he has got a job offer from Deloitte to himself. So he is the best person who can talk about networking and all other doubts which I have to clarify on building your profile and portfolio that will be required for your job interview and for the CV. And uh, and at the last, I would like to welcome all the IEDC uh, nodal officer, joint coordinator, and all the IEDC expo members and the participants who have been working uh, continuously for this event to make this one a success one, and who have coordinated all the events such a uh, work, uh, such properly that we have uh, all the events we have conducted was a successful one. So I welcome all the IEDC members and the participants who have been eagerly waiting for this event to continue. I welcome you all. Thanks all. Uh, over to you, Helena. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now let me invite Dr. P. Sojan Lal, Principal of Marbe Seyus Institute of Technology and Science, who is a continuous learner and a very humble and honored personality to speak a few words. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Helena. You mentioned I'm a continuous learner. It's glad to hear that. Uh, Mr. Udesh Kumar, Mahesh, sir, and uh, Window, sir, all the student participants uh, across uh, India. And uh, Salina was pointed out, I'm a continuous learner, I want to continue also. So I also request you to continue in the same phase because multiple opportunities you are getting, particularly nowadays it is online programs. Now actually I'm sitting in the school where I studied. This is uh, in the school where I studied. This is the government uh, UP school, Pulindanam. And uh, this is where I studied uh, from my fifth or sixth, and that is 1971 to 74. And for some programs, I've been here now. And uh, you can see where I'm not. So the uh, thing is that uh, now uh, your normal pedagogy has uh, completely changed, particularly over the last one year or one and a half years, since almost from the last month. Unfortunately, we have this E4IC, Education 4.0 Implementation Committee, which is headed by Jinto and his uh, team members, all youngsters from various departments. And the contributions of uh, the entire team is so marvelous that now we are very much popular across India. 
and also among all ACT people and also the major premier institute. So nearly about 18,000 uh, participants attended our previous webinars. And again, around 1,900 institutions are approximately represented for various programs. And if you look at more or less, we are conducting so many programs. And also I'm very glad that uh, this IEDC cell of MBITS is independently handling uh, various programs. And uh, this is a second program during this week itself. And also during the COVID pandemic, uh, people like Pawan and other, lots of people have come forward uh, with the innovative ideas. And definitely I'm sure that this will help you in your future uh, career as well as uh, your normal life also. And also uh, particularly talking to this uh, LinkedIn profile, I request that uh, all the students, uh, if any one of you are not having this LinkedIn profile, kindly enable your LinkedIn profile. One thing you should make sure that uh, whenever you choose the Mar Basilis Institute of Technology, there is uh, one particular name with our official uh, emblem is there, kindly choose that because when the people are created different, different uh, uh, institute names, somebody has created as MBITS Kodongalan, somebody has put as MBITS Nellimatum. So why I'm telling, maybe Udesh will also tell you why I'm talking about like this, because uh, our institute, which is uh, now we are practicing so that you will get it connected also. And I'm sure that there is a lot of information which is going to provide you. And it is very popular in US and all, and but maybe not very much popular in our campus because you have still uh, yet to grow into that. So wishing you all the best and uh, thank you Mr. Udesh for joining and enlightening our students on this particular topic. And uh, I'm sure that after that, uh, now we can say about 136 people are there and some more will uh, be joining. We'll see that every one of you are having a LinkedIn profile and we'll explain to you uh, what are the benefits and uh, in your career uh, in searching, I mean, I don't have to explain, he's going to explain all this and let uh, you get the benefit out of that. Thank you very much and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Udesh Uday Kumar, Cloud Consultant at Deloitte and a YouTuber with the channel The Cloud Pilot is our resource person for the day. He's working as a Google Cloud Consultant at Deloitte and has obtained a copyright from the government of India for the work towards DCP architecture for educational e-governance platforms. He has spoken in more than 20 events on LinkedIn profile optimization, cloud computing and certifications. He has also got a YouTube channel, The Cloud Pilot, which contains Google Cloud platforms, platform tutorials and interviews by experts from different domains. Let's all invite Udesh Udaya Kumar sir for the talk session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Elena, for the warm introduction. And uh, thank you, sir, for um, talking a bit about LinkedIn and networking. And uh, Elena just uh, wanted to um, make a small clarification that you don't re uh, really need to um, address me as sir, because that, that's not how actually industry works. You actually call them by your uh, by their name or they uh, use Mr. with their sub, uh, surname. So that's how the industry works. Uh, and uh, Sir and ma'am is just referring to academics. So maybe I think uh, you guys can also practice that as well. So thank you for the introduction. Uh, it was uh, so kind of you. And uh, yeah, so basically I, let me just uh, try to uh, tell about uh, how I reached at this stage. So let's say we can divide everyone who are in this um, audience into four categories. And these categories are one is people who don't know what is LinkedIn. The second one is people who knows what is LinkedIn, but they don't really have an account. The third one is people know LinkedIn and they have an account, but they haven't used it yet. And the fourth one is people who are using it, but don't know if they are using it efficiently. So, any of these people, any of these audience here, or even, even me, was a part of each of that group. So the point is to surpass those four groups and reach at a new group is effectively networking using LinkedIn. That's the fifth group, which people rarely get into. So if you talk about me, I started, I heard about LinkedIn while I was in college. 
So LinkedIn started more than 11 years back, but uh, I heard about LinkedIn in 2018. And in 2019, I started a LinkedIn account out of curiosity, just wanted to see what it was and uh, what it actually, how it actually works. So I just started for, just for the sake of fi finding how it works. And uh, then I started it in 2019 and I didn't really post anything uh, on that day. In fact, I kept it idle and I didn't really use that application for the next six months after I created the uh, account. So then after that, I got into a national healthcare hackathon where we actually ended up uh, as the top 10 finalist. And that was the first time I was actually posting on LinkedIn. But I, at that point of time, my perception towards LinkedIn was to post uh, to showcase your achievements, but, uh, but that was not the real um, aim point or whatever the vision the company had. So it is basically a job portal, not just a job portal. It's basically a networking platform where you can actually come across people of different uh, interests, different domains and uh, different age groups. You can mingle with them more having one certain goal to have a professional career. So then I start, uh, started to know about uh, how LinkedIn works during the lockdown. And uh, then I started uh, trying to network with people and uh, slowly I had conversations with them and uh, that was how initially these networks got set up. So I was totally into um, how I could actually make uh, the best out of LinkedIn. So, in fact, I have been preparing myself, like I have been learning from all those experience I had so far, and I have been learning from my mistakes. So I'll also share what all things you should be doing on LinkedIn and why LinkedIn is actually relevant for your profile. So before telling me, uh, telling you uh, how relevant LinkedIn is, let me just tell you something that I got the offer from Deloitte just because of LinkedIn and my skill sets. So skill sets are important, of course, but, but the thing is people who really know you on LinkedIn will open up a lot of opportunities to get you to somewhere. Because let, let's say somebody in the industry knows that you are good in something and uh, they can actually recommend you for something, then they will automatically help you find an opportunity. And this process is actually enabled through LinkedIn and not just LinkedIn, but in any other contacting like networking is everything. So if you just look into the future, you are, uh, India is going to be a very populated country and uh, most of the population is going to be youngsters and uh, the amount of job is going to be uh, increasing, but not at the scale of population. So there is going to be a tight competition. I, I mean, even you, you also would have uh, felt that while getting admissions to your college, you would have seen that there is a, a massive increase uh, in the admission rates. Uh, if I think if the administration panels or um, if the uh, principal or anybody would know who were in the admission process, I think uh, you will be able to understand that uh, the amount of uh, intakes and uh, also the uh, the amount of uh, applications uh, came from uh, came for, uh, from this year would uh, would have been very much uh, uh, more than what you would have received on 2017 so so this difference is actually leading to some point where you you will have to find a job competing with all others so at that point of time visibility is the key criteria so once you have this visibility, then you will be easily able to fetch a job as long as you have the appropriate skill sets. And one thing about our region is that we usually just respect ourselves to college placements. And uh, we just study for four years, get a college placement, and uh, we just go to a job. But that's not really the case. So for me, I just only really sat for two uh, offers on campus. and. Uh, I had actually got five offers from off campus and all of these are five, four out of five was through LinkedIn, including Deloitte. So if you don't know Deloitte, Deloitte, it's a big four company. It's the number one cloud uh, consulting company in the world. So they had actually reached me for a job for Google cloud uh, consultant. And uh, I 
um, proceeded the process. So this happened because of LinkedIn, how I was utilizing LinkedIn and uh, how I improved my visibility using my skill sets. And this is very much important because if you see a lot of people have LinkedIn, but rarely people stand out from LinkedIn and this standout is what is actually necessary. And uh, this is the relevance of LinkedIn that in the future, when you uh, go, like when you try to find a good career or when you try to switch your career, you will have to face some competition. And uh, you, if you have a good network, then that competition is getting uh, going to be reduced. So let's say if you have 100 people uh, participating for the same role, and if the recruiter knows you personally, then there is a high chance that you are going to be in that uh, 10 people, let's say five people, who the recruiter is going to shortlist from those 100 people. So that improves your chances to find an opportunity. And uh, not just the networking side, you should also have the skills, which is very much important. And uh, as long as you have the right set of skills or as long as you develop the skills, you will be able to find a job but finding a job requires networking and uh, initially i would say build uh, your skill sets using um, the resources available because i never spend a single um, uh, rupee on my materials on cloud computing i learned everything online and it took me around uh, a year to get uh, a, a good grasp into cloud computing so you see i i actually went uh, through an extensive process, like it was very intense. And uh, I actually had ended up studying almost 14 to 15 hours a day uh, to uh, when I was preparing for my certifications. So I am also I am also proud to say that I am among the youngest in the world to uh, actually uh, clear the Google Cloud, uh, professional cloud architect exam. And uh, this is something which you should, uh, also uh, be aware of because these are something which can make you stand out from the crowd and google cloud uh, professional cloud architect certification is not something which can be cleared by everyone and it's usually taken by people who have more than two years experience in the industry and uh, taking that uh, while i was in college will be definitely a, um, a bigger achievement and i could stand out and uh, also, uh, when people, I, I have observed that uh, people when are uh, trying to um, use LinkedIn, they don't really know how to use LinkedIn. And that's something which uh, they should be aware of. Uh, like uh, They should have an approach to network with people. So basically, it's all about having your own approach on how to make, impress someone, uh, impress a total stranger uh, rather than someone it's a total stranger into somebody who uh, who can be converted into a long-term relationship so let's say you are trying to connect with somebody don't just confine yourself to just sending a connection request i have seen a lot of people uh, who are just sending me a connection request i thought they would be having uh, they would be having something to say so I would be expecting something from them, but it would be idle. So whenever I try to um, say uh, accept my accept a new connection request, I see that people just send connection because they think uh, they are in their network and they can reach them at any time. But the real point is when you actually try to connect with them, it they doesn't necessarily need to be connected with you because you don't really have any reasons to convince them that you actually need them in your network. So, uh, when you actually try to connect with someone, send them a message. Send them as a message and uh, see how they respond. Many, I, I, I believe many of you would have uh, had an occasion where you would have sent a connection request, but they have not accepted it yet. It could be maybe more than three months or six months or nine months or even a year. And you could still see that they haven't accepted your connection request. 
that's because they receive a lot of requests just like you every day so when somebody gets uh, almost around uh, let's say to 25 or 30 or 50 uh, connection request every day they don't really have time to accept each and every one thing so what they do is they try to see which all requests are going to stand out and that is where personalized request feature for linkedin is actually um, good or let's say is a blessing so when you send a personalized request it actually sends them a message and it goes down to their inbox and they can see that somebody has sent them a message so they will see the, uh, they can identify that you have taken some effort in order to reach them so just sending a connection request will only take actually just a second maybe less but sending a personalized request on why you want to connect and introducing yourself in a few words is actually going to make a few uh, a whole lot difference because the you are actually you should actually spend more than a minute in order to draft that sentence and uh, uh, type it and then send them so this effort for one minute is actually appreciated there uh, provided that you are not sending to uh, sending the request to a person who is at a top level let's say on a cxo level so this thing could be very useful for you if you try to see you can use personalized messages whenever you are trying to connect with someone and the second thing is it doesn't matter who you are connecting with it's what it actually matters is how much bond or the what is the depth of the bond which your connection is sharing with you that is the most important point rather than having let's say i have thousand connections and uh, i have these people but i have not talked to anyone is actually worst and uh, let's say i have 100 connections but i have a very good relation with all of them that is the best part compared to people having connections with thousand people but who have actually not spoken to them so it's ultimately about how much uh, bond you share with those people in the long term that is the real key for your career growth and that is the actual aim for networking so what you are doing is like you are building a web like a spider so what you just do is you have point of contacts at each places wherever you go just you will have contacts which you can connect yourself with and that paves more opportunity so uh, i have earlier discussed uh, about four categories uh, people who don't know linkedin i have been there in 2018 before 2018 i was in that category i i believe many of you would have been in that category even i thought uh, linkedin was something like facebook and uh, that, uh, that was why i didn't really use it because i already had facebook then uh, then i came to know what was linkedin and how uh, it was trying to fetch us jobs so uh, then i started using linkedin and uh, then i created a, a linkedin account and uh, i didn't really use anything because i felt it idle and uh, i didn't really have any content in order to post uh, initially i thought it was basically my uh, achievements which should be showcased and i didn't really have any kind of achievements at that point of time so i thought maybe i should uh, i should keep it idle and i just kept it idle so i was through the second phase at that time then i came to the third phase where i actually had an account when uh, and i was not using it then i came into the fourth phase during the lockdown which uh, where i was actually not sure if i was doing it effectively or not and uh, i started networking with more people i started interacting with pe more people and uh, slowly i i, I came to know about a few things which linkedin doesn't appreciate and uh, what things which we could do in order to improve our uh, linkedin profile basically linkedin profile optimization and uh, that was the fourth phase and uh, now currently hopefully i'm in the fifth phase where i'm actually effectively using linkedin because um, if not that i would i wouldn't be speaking here with you today if i hadn't been using linkedin so effectively so these are the five phases and uh, you would be uh, you could actually take a, a recap and see where uh, you can actually evaluate where you are based on these criteria you could actually find out where which uh, group you belong to and uh, you need whatever things you need to do 
in order to surpass all these four groups and get another fifth group as early as possible. So I have spoken about the relevance of LinkedIn. Now, uh, let's say about networking. So in networking, what it actually happens is you are trying to build a relation with a few people. So that was why I mentioned it's not about sending connection requests. It's about speaking with them, trying to understand them, trying to let them know uh, that uh, you have uh, these kind of uh, skill sets and uh, you have all these um, attributes which can be utilized uh, in the future or in the current and uh, you are potentially a good resource for them to reach out so this is uh, what the image should be like in front of others so you have to try and uh, build uh, this kind of uh, image with others so in order to build that you need to talk to them and while talking to them, you have to make sure that you are respecting their time because you don't really know how much uh, uh, how much uh, tight schedule they would be having and they would be like spending a few minutes on LinkedIn and that would be the time when you are actually, uh, they are actually responding to your message. And you have to respect their time. You have to initially ask for their time so that that will actually be more humble and uh, while asking, try to ask them about uh, 15 to 20 minutes um, whenever you're trying to set up a discussion. And uh, that is the ideal time because if you just ask for a five minutes, that pretty much uh, exhausted once you are uh, done with introducing yourself about uh, what you're doing and uh, where you are. Basically, all those basic steps will be over within five minutes. So don't really ask for uh, five minutes, rather ask for uh, 15 to 20 minutes because the asking for 30 minutes uh, quite a long time so just ask for 15 to 20 minutes of uh, their free time so that uh, you can discuss and uh, the uh, the second thing is uh, uh, about that is that uh, you have to follow up so there might be cases where people had actually missed uh, seeing your message uh, in between so you have, you can actually use a follow up uh, let's say ask them uh, and uh, say uh, tell them that uh, they haven't really heard from you and that they would like to follow up so if you can ask them that is also going to be a good uh, uh, appreciative gesture where, which uh, they will then uh, re recognize and uh, next one is effectively optimizing your profile so linkedin has uh, several algorithms uh, which is kept uh, confined to them and uh, which can be actually um, refined uh, using uh, your profile optimization. So let me just present my screen and I'll show you my profile on uh, how you can actually share, um, make it better. So uh, do you see my profile or can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so now if you see, I have actually followed everything what LinkedIn have recommended and I have also tried a few things which LinkedIn has not uh, released it into public, but something which can also help us with uh, improving our profile. So the first thing is very much important. You have to give your full name, uh, not any initials. You have to uh, have your uh, names and your surname. And the second thing is the headline. So in this headline, you have to briefly explain, not briefly explain, let's say in the fewest words possible, you have to talk about yourself. So when a person visits your LinkedIn profile, this is how it is going to be, um, this is how it go, uh, looks like. So what you have to see is the, they just look for your name and what you are doing that actually shows you who you are and what you're doing and uh, you can uh, take a few tips in order to fill it so you can just say who you are and uh, what you do apart from your job and where your interest lies so i am a cloud consultant at deloitte and i'm google cloud certified not just google cloud but also on azure and uh, alibaba cloud and on Matrix. And I also have a YouTube channel, The Cloud Pilot, where I actually post contents on Google Cloud Platform tutorials and also with uh, different interviews with people who are experts in different uh, domains 
on how to start a career in that particular domain. So if you haven't checked that channel out, you can um, also check that out. And uh, then I have uh, also given my field of interest, which is infrastructure, DevOps, and site reliability engineering. That is something which I have interest in. So when people who try to visit my profile, if they have the same set of interest, then they are most most probably they are going to uh, be in my network. And uh, that is uh, something which is very much relevant when you try to find your job because you will get to see that who actually aligns with your interest and you can try to reach them out. And uh, profile picture is very much important and uh, LinkedIn profile actually looks, the algorithm actually looks for your profile picture to see if you have used it professionally or not. And the recommended uh, guidelines for uh, the profile picture is that try to uh, make the uh, background plain as possible. So while, uh, while you try to post a, a, a picture, try to make it white or make it a totally blurred background. A blurred as in not, uh, you don't, uh, you should, uh, you should be, it should be totally blurred and uh, your, uh, only your uh, image should be clear. And uh, basically just try to be, uh, try to have a pl uh, plain background. And uh, that would be more attractive uh, rather than people who are uh, actually standing in a crowd or taking a selfie, which is actually not appreciated. And uh, you, you can, uh, you should not post any pictures like trees or flowers, which I have observed a lot or any other themes. And uh, you should not be posting any selfies and uh, you should not also post any group photos because I have also observed that. And in the uh, cover page or the, in the banner section, what you should actually do is you have to post uh, a photo. L let's say you can po po even post a quote, but whatever you are posting should be clean and your profile as in your profile picture and uh, your name should be emphasized in such a way that uh, the background you're taking is a bit darker. So what I mean by that is you choose a background which is a bit darker and uh, it's a background that actually emphasizes your profile picture and your profile name. And then you can also add the company which you're working on and uh, also the college which you work. So there, uh, I'll come to that point. And uh, then coming down, LinkedIn, you can also use open to work on LinkedIn. So when you just see you have this LinkedIn's open to work and uh, while using open to work, make sure that you are using LinkedIn for recruiters on the visibility. I'll show you that. So when you just see this, I have uh, posted my job titles, whichever uh, roles I'm interested in and the locations and the start date and the time I have given the details and I'm using recruiters only because LinkedIn is a big platform with a lot of uh, people uh, using it. So there could be many uh, opportunities which are actually fake. So may, many people can actually reach you to say that they have a potential opportunity and uh, which could actually be fake. So in order to distinguish that, you can use uh, recruiters only because that is something which is only used by uh, people who are using LinkedIn recruiter. So that, uh, that means that people are more genuine at that point of time. So if you get any offers through that uh, LinkedIn recruiters, then that is going to be uh, genuine and uh, you can actually proceed with that because people doesn't really pay for LinkedIn recruiters just to post uh, fake jobs. So you can use that. And uh, only I would recommend uh, using open to hire only if you are able to distinguish uh, which is a fake and which is not. So you, uh, then you can also provide your services. So let's say you have a skill on something and you want to provide uh, that as a service, then you can also do that as long as it doesn't really break the company policy, which you, you would be working on. And then this is the dashboard, which is actually private to you. And, um, this shows how much uh, profile uh, uh, people have uh, viewed 
in the last uh, 90 days and how much post views you had and uh, what how much search appearance so let's say how much time i have uh, appeared in a particular search so this actually involves how much active you are so currently i'm not really much active i just uh, i am not really i haven't really posted in a while so this has been reducing it was 4000 uh, a few uh, two months ago and uh, this was around 22000 and uh, this was also around 300 so the main point is you have to try to improve these and uh, this is actually where you can uh, improve uh, yourself using uh, linkedin so this uh, these three are the criteria where you can actually see that if you are visible or not so the greater the numbers you have the more visible you are and uh, make sure that you reach all star by filling in all the details uh, relevant to um, your LinkedIn profile. So reaching this all-star is something related to algorithm. So once you reach this all-star, there is a high chance that your profile is going to be visible for a lot of people. And LinkedIn also has a creator mode. So if you are uh, particularly articulating any contents on any particular topic, then you can actually use uh, LinkedIn creator mode. And uh, you can also uh, use these to manage your network. So if you have a idle uh, network, some idle connection, and uh, if you don't really, um, let's say, if you don't really talk with somebody, you can actually uh, just um, un unfriend them or remove from their connection. And uh, that is also something which is relevant. So having less number of connections and uh, more number of interactions is always optimal. And then you have this featured section where you can actually try to attract people. So in this, my featured section, what I have done is I have a YouTube channel uh, with, where I share contents on cloud computing. So I can actually uh, post it so that uh, I can market my YouTube channel with uh, people on my network. And I can post uh, whatever is uh, some whatever content is uh, relevant to attract people. So I have this professional cloud architect certification, which is uh, something of, of one of the toughest exams in the world. So if I have cleared that people would be um, trying to reach me and ask me for uh, how uh, ask me for guidance on how to prepare for those exams and all those stuff. So I can uh, try to grab a lot of people in into my network. And then I also have a copyright uh, obtained uh, like granted by the government of India for the work which I did while I was in college. So when I have all these things, I will uh, be standing out. So this featured section is something like your showcase. So you are showing that you have got these, uh, these much things which are very much important and uh, very much attractive. And uh, this is where uh, people will uh, see um, what you have done after they visit your profile. And then coming down, Activity session, you, you should be very careful while you using the activity session because a lot of people are using nowadays uh, using LinkedIn like Facebook and Instagram. So don't really use it because when employers actually try to visit your profile, they actually look out for your LinkedIn profile to see if you have one and uh, they try to see what all activities you have been engaging with. So you always have to keep this uh, decorum, a professional decorum uh, throughout uh, in order to be a good employee and in order to bring a good image. So whatever you have posted, uh, commented, uh, will be visible through this uh, section. And uh, you, you should actually restrict yourself from do posting anything which is uh, potentially going to harm you in your future. And the next section is the about section where you can <clears throat> briefly explain what you are and who you are, or let's say, you can briefly explain your headline here and add some of the things which you also couldn't add in this section. So here I have briefly told uh, that I'm working as a cloud consultant and um, what I'm doing and uh, what my achievements are and uh, what I have done apart from my personal professional career. So that is uh, something um, which uh, is also important. And while having this, Bulleted points will make it easy for them to read because if you just write a paragraph, then they, they won't really try to spend their time reading it. But when you have a bullet 
uh, points um, which is written about you, then they will it will be easy for them to read these points. And then comes the experience section where you can actually post your experience. And by that, what I mean is you have to post only the industry relevant experiences and not really something which uh, you have um, not done. So let's say you have been um, trying to do some marketing internship. So as long as your career is not into marketing, never post these kind of things on your experience section. And if you just uh, look into mine, I never really did any internships. I never, I did zero internships in my college, but Deloitte was the company that reached me and Deloitte was my seventh offer. And uh, this happened due to visibility. So if you just try to see, this is the difference between just um, doing something uh, which other people are doing, just following the trend and trying to be outstanding. This is the difference. And uh, here, when you try to fill in your experience, if you have uh, worked in any internship, then that is very good. And uh, you can um, post what role you are actually working on, the company, when you started and uh, how long it is going. And then you should also try to uh, draft a one-liner where you can actually, uh, let's say, you can actually tell them briefly about what you are doing in that particular role. So you can also share your impacts, uh, which you have uh, brought there and uh, whatever changes you have made, you can mention everything. And I'm also a commun uh, community influencer at Google Crowdsource. And I was a Microsoft Learn student partner. So I posted all those and that improved my visibility uh, uh, to a whole new level. And I was also a president for the academic forum for a project management institute at my college. And uh, that's uh, and I have also briefly explained what I have did during uh, my tenure. And adding some images would also be good because uh, that really shows that um, that really looks like something to showcase at that point of opportunity. And then you have this education. You have to post your college name and if your college is on Instagram, you are, or, um, I'm sorry, if you, your college is on uh, LinkedIn, then you can tag it and uh, add it so that you will be visible to everyone who have studied in your college or in your university. So let's say you want to connect with somebody uh, who had been, uh, who is working at your dream company, but is someone who have uh, connected, uh, like who, who have studied in your same college, then you have there you have a reason to connect with them you are uh, you are connecting with an alumni and uh, you want to ask them for your guidance uh, and uh, then this is actually possible because that improves your chance to connect get connected or uh, get networked to a whole new level because most probably i think 99% of people will actually accept uh, the request from your same college then you don't really need to uh, worry about if they would not uh, connect or not. You can actually connect with them uh, if they, they are in your same college. So that is the importance which uh, college uh, has in your education. And also, if your college has a certain reputation, then that is actually going to help you uh, build your professional image as well. And then coming to the next sections, it is a uh, license and certification. So whenever you, if you have any kind of certification and uh, here, something which you should actually um, take a note is that many people, I have observed that many people are trying to post poor certifications as certifications while it's actually not the real certification. So if you have done any certifications as in course, Never add it because course can be done by anybody and it's just an online learning platform. I have seen a lot of people trying to do Google Cloud courses, for example, on Coursera and they just uh, try to post that course certificate and uh, they even changed the issuing authority to Google where, while the actual issuing authority was Coursera. So this actually brings uh, some kind of a misunderstanding uh, with people who are actually visiting it. And that is not uh, really good for your um, image. And uh, these, uh, what I mean by certifications is those uh, certifications which 
is uh, relevant in the industry. So let's say cloud certifications is actually relevant because cloud is something which is going to be the future. And uh, similarly, uh, you can also post your volunteering experience. So that actually shows you uh, as a human who you are and what you want to do for the community. And uh, you can do uh, a lot of things in your professional career, but what you do out of your professional career will also be a good um, point where you can actually uh, make yourself stand out. And having a good number of um, like activities which, uh, which you are actually volunteering during your uh, professional career or even before is go actually going to be very good because that is going to improve your soft skills to a whole new level. And uh, then the, uh, they have this LinkedIn skills and endorsement where you can actually um, post uh, whatever skills you have. And something which you should be uh, very much um, careful of is that you should only post whatever you know. Never add anything which you don't know. So if you just look into mine, I have only a few uh, skill sets which I have added. The limit of adding skills is 50, but I have only posted something around uh, 20 to 23. And uh, while posting, uh, uh, try to uh, clear the LinkedIn skill assessment, which is actually something which uh, you can also validate. But that doesn't uh, necessarily guarantee you anything, but still having that will be something which you can stay uh, out. And uh, also they have this endorsement where people uh, people in your network can actually endorse you for that particular skill. It's like they say, I know this person and this person is good at this thing. And uh, I am endorsing him for this and I will recommend him for doing such a task related to this point. So this is what endorsement means and people can actually endorse you for your skills. And the more number of endorsements you have, the more visibility you will be having. And then coming down, you have the recommendations and in recommendations, you can uh, receive recommendations and give recommendations. Basically for college students, I would not recommend giving recommendations, but rather try to receive recommendations from different people who, uh, with whom you have worked. And uh, something which uh, I found uh, very uh, relevant is that this is not something uh, actually shared by LinkedIn, but what you can actually do is follow a three to one path out of your in recommendations. So this three to one path, what I mean by three to one path is the ratio of recommendations by different people. And uh, out, uh, let's say you get six uh, recommendations. What you have to do is try to get three recommendations from people above you. Like if you're a student, try to get uh, recommendations from people in the industry having a good number of experience. And the second one is the peer one, which is the two, two part. So get two recommendations from your peers. So that shows them that you are a team, um, team member. So, or something like uh, you are uh, ready to mingle with their team, something like you are a team player. And the one is that, you have to get uh, your recommendation from somebody who is actually below you. So at that point of time, what images, they look up to you as somebody who is very much uh, resourceful. So they are looking up to you and expecting something and uh, you want to deliver it. So while following this three to one is actually the optimal recommendation system, I would say. Uh, you will be having a lot of views and uh, that is actually going to build up a good image in front of the people who is actually visiting your profile. And uh, if you just uh, look into my recommendations, I have people, mostly I have people in my industry and two recommendations uh, with my peers. And then uh, they have the accomplishment section where you can actually post your publications, your patents, your course, and uh, your projects, whatever projects you have done. And again, uh, this is something like a digital resume, so make sure that you fill everything which is uh, available to you. So if you have done courses, this is actually where you have to add those coursework. So if you have done any online courses, add them here. And uh, projects, uh, if you have done any projects, uh, tell, uh, tell them what you have done, what was your contribution, how you were doing it and uh, what was the end result and how you could measure the end result. 
this this is the format and all all of these should be contained within one sentence and uh, this is the format which you can also use it on your resume as well and uh, you can post your honors and awards and uh, you can post any test course like uh, gmat or uh, let's say gre anything which you have got a good score then you can also post that but that's not too relevant and you can add your uh, languages and organizations which you are a part of and uh, that's pretty much about uh, your profile uh, and uh, this is how you can actually um, say you can optimize your profile and uh, something which i will uh, recommend is editing your url so when you can actually use a custom url for yourself you can see that you can edit your custom url here and try to give your full name so that it is more easy for people to get your uh, name and uh, try to let's say improve visibility because while typing uh, if somebody asks to share your uh, uh, linkedin file then you can just uh, uh, and when you don't have your uh, device with you what you uh, you won't be uh, really uh, remembering what the exact username it was because that is a alphanumeric uh, set of numbers and letters and uh, you you can't really remember that all the time so customize it to your name so that you can easily tell it and uh, then uh, let's say, give me a second and uh, something which you can optimize something which you can monitor your linkedin is by using linkedin ssi so ssi stands for social selling index and you can use uh, your linkedin ssi to see where you actually stand in the industry or in the profiles so you can just click here to get your score for free and you can see where you are actually be at so i have uh, gone down from my positions and these are the components which is actually um, trying to see how much things you are doing so you can measure yourself how much better you are doing based on these components so this is establish your professional brand and uh, that actually stands for how much uh, frequently you are posting or how much interaction you have and uh, find the right people is trying to connect with people having your same set of uh, interest and uh, uh trying to build some good relations with them and engage with the insights is about commenting and uh, trying to in, uh, engage in discussions with other people uh to find some good insights and that is engage with the insights and build relationship is to try to connect with people and uh, carry it out for a long run so the, uh, these are something which is very much important for uh, your growth and you can also see how much uh, where you are actually standing in your network and uh, the industry which you are working on so this is something which is also very much important uh, when it comes to uh, optimizing your profile so you can actually use this for criteria and you can use actually your use this linkedin ssi to see how much uh, how much uh, good or better you are performing so this is pretty much uh, about uh, finding um, optimizing your linkedin profile and uh, also uh, about networking which is something uh, which i missed uh, telling you is that you have to keep your relations um, active at all point of time you should not keep it idle at any point so if you have connected with someone make sure that you keep in touch with them uh, and uh, you you are uh, let them know that uh, you value them because that is how people want to um be treated and also when you try to search for jobs never ever try to ask referrals at, uh, directly because what happens is you uh, that will actually make them feel that you are trying to um, treat that person like an object so which is not, not something which is uh, appreciated uh, even we wouldn't also like to be uh, treated as a object because you just ask for your referral once they give you you abandon them that is not a good way of uh, behaving so try to interact with them try to tell them about uh, about yourself and uh, maybe they would actually refer you by themselves 
so if they have come across any opening they would actually tell you or they can even recommend you for that position if you just tell them and uh, if you just take my case i have a lot of very good friends uh, on linkedin and uh, at different countries so i have a, a very strong connections on us i have strong connections in luxembourg in germany in france in london i have a lot of connection i have a lot of very good uh, professional and uh, let's say uh, top level people in my network who are actually very connected uh, very much connected to me and that is through the interaction and uh, we definitely have to uh treat them some uh, like the way we want to get ourselves treated so treat them like treat them even better than how we expect to others to treat ourselves that would be more appropriate so that that will be the time when they will be also treating us even better so that is pretty much about uh, what i wanted to say and if you have any questions i hope you have understood this and if you have any questions please do ask me and i'll happy to answer that back to you and thank you so much for listening any questions <laughs> thank you so much sir we are very grateful for the valuable time we got to spend with you let me remind all the participants that any questions regarding the session can be asked directly or you can put it up in the chat box yes we have a question how genuine is the job post how genuine is the job post and internship post in linkedin okay so just as i mentioned earlier a lot of people are actually using linkedin so you have to see if that is actually uh, relevant uh, to your profile and if it is uh, genuine or not you have to check them based on their profile and uh, tr- uh, always make sure that i have seen a lot of posts where um, people say come and interested and then i send you the link those links are just to, uh, to get some data and basically they are trying to make money from your data so never ever uh, try to uh, comment interested uh, rather try to find the jobs in the career website because uh, linkedin is not really uh, designed uh, for people at entry level because you might see a lot of um, experiences being asked uh, like uh, let's say an entry level requires more than 4 years of experience in the industry so which is actually um, utterly a blunder so you should actually try to see if that is uh, really genuine or not first you have to try and observe that if it is genuine through their profile first check their profile and see if they are genuine or not second thing try to get into the link but then see if that is actually relevant to your profile or your career so that, rather than doing a random internship try to do an internship that actually matches your skills and actually takes you to somewhere where you want to be that is uh, how you can check the genuinity so rather uh, if you want to be somebody a cloud engineer don't go for software engineering just try for cloud engineering internships and if you want to be a software engineer try to find any software developer internships and uh, rather while you um, try to find your internship always try to do the paid ones because a lot of unpaid internships are uh, going on in the uh, in all the platforms so never really try to get those because they are trying to basically utilize you for free and uh, that is not something which uh, you would also get and some uh, one more thing which you should be careful of is that uh, you have to see if they are actually providing you any work so you have to um, make sure that it is not really something uh, which they have a, some a few tasks which they have assigned rather you are actually working for them so this is how you can actually check the genuinity i hope it helps thank you why did you choose 
Lloyd over the other six companies that have offered you job? Interesting. That's a good question. So. Deloitte is a big four company. So it is the number one company in the world when it comes to consulting. So starting my career at Deloitte is something which a lot of people dream of. So everybody doesn't get that opportunity. And when you get that opportunity, try to grab it. And Deloitte was the, let's say Deloitte was the company which was on top list because uh, Let's say you get to meet a lot of people because Deloitte is a huge organization and it has a net worth of more than $50 billion, which is huge. And uh, it was consulting, which is something which I was very much interested on. And uh, the other six offers, uh, talking about the other six offers, I actually had uh, four of the offers were actually software engineering. And which I was not totally interested, and I was totally towards cloud, and uh, I wanted to do something in the cloud, and that was why I wasn't really interested. In fact, I was sure that I would get the offer once I was done with the interview. To be honest, so I just uh, said uh, I just decided I would not take up those four offers uh, after just after my interviews. So I just got those offers, and I immediately said no to it. I rejected those four offers immediately. And then I had these three offers uh, based on cloud uh, where I actually chose Deloitte, uh, which was more uh, good for me to start my career. What made you intro towards cloud? Okay, so it was during the lockdown where I actually started learning cloud computing and uh, slowly uh, um, I did my research. That is the key point. Uh, I explored cloud, I found it interesting, and then I did a research on cloud. So what, what research I did was I tried to look into the industry trends and uh, I tried to see where cloud will be after some time. So I found that cloud computing is going to be very relevant, very important topic, and uh, something which is going to be a key changer. Because uh, you might have seen uh, that uh, people uh, who were uh, like teenagers in 2000s never really had mobile phones. And uh, people in 2010 actually had mobile phones. So there is a difference. And uh, while talking to people like in 2000, it was quite something different. People couldn't really, never really had internet and uh, they didn't really communicate much but when you when you compare it to 2010 there was a lot of internet and i think i believe uh, many of you would have been uh, on uh, like at least you would have been using google chrome at that point of time so uh, this difference is actually evident in the industry as well so companies have these kind of data centers which is uh, where they actually host those servers. So having their own data centers is a huge uh, cost and they have a lot of cost involved in it. And when it is cloud, somebody is actually providing them those resources. They don't really need these data centers. So they don't really need to buy the land. They don't really need to set up the infrastructure. They don't really need a department of people to handle it. So they are saving a lot of money when they are moving into cloud. So this is something very important for every company in order to reduce the cost. And that is why all the companies are moving into cloud. So if you just see how Google Chrome was in 2006 versus what Google Chrome is in 2020 is the difference it is going to be for cloud computing in the upcoming years. So let's say people never really knew what was cloud computing at this point of time, but it is going to be a mandatory thing after five years. So you won't be, uh, I doubt you would be getting a job if you don't know cloud computing. So this is the relevance, which is um, like, which actually drove me towards cloud. And that was something which I was very much interested in. So find your interest and uh, do the necessary research and see 
whatever is relevant to the industry so that you can be always be on top how is the work life balance in deloitte okay so in deloitte uh, I, um the work life balance is not really good uh, to be honest the work life balance is not really good because the it basically depends on the project which you are getting so if you get an indian client then you can actually work on the indian time but you if you have a us client which i'm working uh, right now i'm working with a us client for a multi million project so that at that point of time uh, you will definitely find a instability in the work life because you will be you will have to uh, find some time which actually compensates their time so for example you need to update them you you will have daily meetings and you need to work out of your work time in order to uh, be in those meetings and you have to um, get updated with them you give your updates get their updates and uh, get in the loop But to be in that loop uh, you have to spend more time rather than your work time so this makes it a bit unstable and it's pretty common with almost all uh, multinational companies which job site you prefer the most basically i would uh, prefer the career uh, sites of any company because that is the most genuine platform which you can find and the second is jobs through networking so if any people have uh, posted any job uh, openings on linkedin try to reach them and uh, see what they are actually going to give you so these are the, uh, some of the best job sites like career site and uh, linkedin post is more um, let's say more relevant and uh, necessary okay i think that's it for the participants attention the feedback form is available in the chat box you can start filling it up now moving moving on to the last session i invite anuja pgg chief operating officer iedc embits for the vote of thanks अनुज मईक I think Anuja is facing some network issue. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes, now audible. Good evening, everyone. Honorable Chief Guests Udesh Udegama, Principal Dr. P. Sajjanlal Sir, Coordinator Mahesh Sir, Jindra Sir, uh, and Moderator Rahul, uh, and all the participants. First of all, I would like to thank Udesh Udegama for accepting our request and joining today. We had a wonderful session. I hope all your doubts and queries are clear now. 
Next, I would like to thank Dr. P. Sauzanlal sir, Mahesh sir, and Jindal sir for, for providing immense support to make this webinar a great success. Then I would like to thank moderator Mr. Rahul KS, who is Chief Financial Officer of IEDC Embeds, for his hard work and efforts for making this even happen. Finally, thank you all the participants for joining in this webinar. Uh, fine, uh, that's all. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the end of the webinar. Thank you all for joining.